Okay. Well, thank you for your testimony here. Uh, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the committee business that's been happening, but um, the last committee meeting we had, uh, the Minister of Emergency Preparedness uh, say to this committee that he left no stone unturned uh, in order to do everything he could to prevent uh, uh, the loss of property in Jasper National Park. Would you agree with that sentence? I would not. Okay, the, the testimony that you've given before this committee today is actually uh, quite alarming. So can you just confirm to me that in a short amount of time, you were able to muster 20 fire trucks and 50 professional firefighters? And could you tell me what the qualifications of those firefighters would be? Were they uh, fire tested firefighters? Yes, so I did have uh, 20 fire trucks and 50 firefighters. Majority of the firefighters I had were NFPA 10001-10002, as well as number, numerous firefighters that were wildland firefighters, either uh, wildland firefighter type one or wildland firefighter type two. So could, could you explain to the committee what that level of certification actually means? Um, uh, that's uh, some fairly technical language. Uh, these are fully certified firefighters. These are, uh, and you said they, each of them had credentials and have experienced fighting fires before? That's correct. So the NFPA qualifications are the same as any uh, municipal firefighter. So similar to Calgary or Edmonton or any fire hall, majority of fire halls in Alberta do subscribe to the NFPA standard. So the volunteer firefighters are trained to the same standard as a big city fire department. The wildland firefighters are the same firefighters that qualifications that are recognized through CIFSI. So the type one firefighter would be the government agency firefighter. The type two firefighter would be the contract firefighter. Okay. Um, in your uh, testimony, you said that uh, the hydrants in Jasper National Park are not the same as the hydrants that are used virtually everywhere else in British Columbia and Alberta. Did I hear that correctly? That is correct. So uh, you also said there's only seven adapters available. So I'm guessing when you say this, what you're meaning is the adapter that you would need to plug in a uh, to the hydrants in Jasper, there, there was only seven of these adapters. So that I'm guessing the Jasper fire trucks, like the ones that are there all the time, are probably able to tie in. Um, my experience from being a warden in Jasper, there's only a couple of fire trucks in town. Um, I'm not belittling their, their their fire service. I think it's a great volunteer fire service like everywhere else. But any, anybody else coming to the community to help would be virtually, they, they have seven adapters. So basically seven rigs could tie in. Is that right? Aside from their mutual aid partners that they rely on, such as Hinton and Clearwater County, uh, any other fire trucks coming at us that do not have a, a normal working relationship with uh, the Parks Canada communities would not have these adapters on board. This is not part of common kit. Okay, so that's that's uh, certainly a factor that uh, that isn't helpful. But you were able to muster uh, enough uh, vehicles to provide water yourself as a contingency. You don't you don't necessarily rely on being able to tie into a hydrant. Is that correct? That's correct. It's been my experience from previous fires that the hydrant systems cannot be deemed as reliable when you have because they're only designed to have one or two structure fires at a time. So when you have numerous fire trucks tying in. It is not impossible for the water system to be completely depleted. So that's why we now use uh, secondary water sources to supply water. And you had the fire trucks and the water trucks available in order to engage the fire in Jasper in the town site, correct? That's correct. And you were told specifically that you could not access and you were told specifically by parks officials to not engage in fighting the fire in Jasper. Do I hear you? Did I hear you say that correctly? They were able to use water from Pyramid Lake, but not from Mathamaska River, and we were not allowed to engage the fire. 20 fire trucks, 50 firefighters, not allowed to engage the fire. Is there anything in the statutes um, that, that you're aware Why? of that would have allowed them to actually bring you under their incident command um, protocols and actually had you join the fight against the fire? So in previous experience, what they could have done was assign a task force leader to our group to act as a liaison to the incident command. So this way we could have a functioning relationship with the incident command um, as well in dire circumstances. If the fire came in and they are worried about the entire community, they do have the ability under various legislation, such as the Alberta Forest and Prairie Protection Act to, to use conscription 
to uh, bring us into their command as well. Do you believe that if you would have been able to engage the fire that you could have saved uh, some property in Jasper Town site? Absolutely. Part of our arsenal that we have out there were two airport fire trucks as well as eight industrial fire trucks. So these are monstrously large fire trucks that could have uh, put out a lot of water to help protect communities uh, on the front line. Then the smaller brush trucks could have been used to help uh, defend the community from the impingements that landed. What did it make you and your crews that you had assembled feel like when you were told not to engage in the fires and you stood and watched properties burn down in Jasper? Briefly, please, Mr. Lieberman. We were deflated. Uh, we felt that our mission, we could have done more to help.